It's that time of the year again. New 2024 set reveals are coming in every day and we have been blessed with the Ninjago 2024 winter wave. And let me tell you something, I hope you like mechs because oh my god are there a lot of mechs in this wave. What is up guys, Ace of Magic here and today we are going to be ranking the Ninjago 2024 winter sets. Now before I begin, I do want to quickly acknowledge that there is a second wave of sets coming out for Ninjago in March, which I don't plan to include on this list because this is going to be just the January wave and the March wave will be its own separate thing. But since there has been one March set revealed already, I will go ahead and talk about that one in this video as well, just because some people are going to want to hear about it. So you guys always want me to talk about these stupid junior sets, so here we go. I will say, this set, it's a little bit better than some of the other Junior's mechs because they did drop that god-awful torso piece they've been using, but there's really nothing here that you can't just find in a better set. So on the surface, I don't actually think that this set is bad. The dragon, it looks fine when you compare it to the other Junior's dragons that we've gotten in the past. I like the new wing pieces, I do think those are cool, although they are way too small to be used on a real dragon. The flame pieces, those are also pretty cool with the purple blending into the normal red. But, you know, there are some good things here, except this is a 120 piece set, which is somehow $40. Like, if this was a $20 set, I could see people wanting it. If it was a $30 set, I, I would think it's a bit of a stretch, but Junior's always has these stupid high prices like that, so I could kind of get it. But, you know, $40, I guess that's the magic number because now it's just hilarious. Like, I know some people might be freaking out right now because there are technically exclusive versions of Climber Kai and Wildfire. And unlike some of the other figures that I'm going to get into later, Wildfire actually has a new design. So it would actually be worth getting. Except here's the thing. There's another set coming out in March called Kai's Ninja Climbing Mech, which is supposed to come with obviously Kai and then also Wildfire. So I guarantee that these figures aren't actually exclusive to the set, and you can just wait and get them in that set, which in all likelihood is going to be a million times better than this thing anyways. And by the way, this set right here is also a March 1st release, so it's not like you're going to be getting these figures a couple months early if you just wait to get that next set. So yeah, this set, it's a total scam. Don't buy it unless if it's like 50% off. So now we're on to the real sets, or at least kind of. These new Rising Dragon Strike sets are this wave's gimmick sets, and to be honest, I don't really know what they're supposed to be. At first I was thinking that they would just kind of be like the Chima Speedor sets, so you know, they would roll around and stuff, but the name of them also makes it sound like maybe there's a way that they actually jump up and then they fall down attacking minifigures. I honestly have no idea, but there are three of them, one for Kai, one for Nia, and then one for Eren. But the thing is, they're all the exact same set except for the minifigures and the colors, so you don't really have to get all of them if you don't want to. The only exclusive thing here is the hoods, which has some gold mixed in, but the actual prints on the minifigures are the same as the ones in the regular sets. So unless the function is actually secretly amazing, I don't really see why people would care that much about these sets. Jay's Mech Battle Pack is honestly really good for the price. It's $11, but you get four minifigures and a mech, and while the mech build is, you know, nothing amazing, it's not horrible by any means. It actually reminds me a lot of the Nexo Knight Battlesuit sets from like six years ago, and I really liked those sets at the time, so I'm sure I'll like this one too. Like I said though, the star of the show here is the minifigures. Obviously, the big deal here is Master Lloyd. It's the first time we've ever gotten a Master Lloyd figure, so getting it in a cheap set is really nice, and the story implications also are obviously very big. The new J is also exclusive here, and then you have the Wolf Villains, which while they're not exclusive, they're still cool. This is a set which I just think is a really good value. Lloyd's Elemental Power Mech is the only regular set on this list that is a March release, and honestly, I don't love it, I just think it looks weird. It feels to me like it was designed to be a Samurai X mech, but then at the last second they changed their mind and just swapped out the primary color to be green because they thought Lloyd would sell better. Because honestly for me, the thing that I don't really like about this set are the colors. Especially the dark red and the green which I just don't think matches very well. But the actual design of the set is good 
and it's really the most different from the rest of the Ninja Max, at least in terms of its look. The minifigures in this set are also good. This is the cheapest way to get Cinder, which is pretty cool. And this is also a good time to mention the big feature of this wave, which is that every single one of these mechs can be combined with each other in different ways. Every mech is designed so the torso, arms, and legs can all disconnect and then be swapped out to make different combinations with the other sets, which I think is a cool idea, but it also does mean that the basic designs of these sets are all going to be pretty much the same. Overall though, this is a fine set, but I definitely feel like it's a little bit weaker than the other ones. Egalt the Master Dragon is the only normal set in this wave that is not a mech, and I actually do think it is pretty cool. The most interesting part about this one is easily the design. The head is a brand new mold with studs on the side which has a mustache attached to it, and then it also has this rice hat on the top. You know, it gives a lot of vibes of a certain master that you guys might know about. There's also a lot of fur detailing with these white flame pieces and spice kind of scattered along the back which I think looks pretty good. And then you have the tail which has a removable sword on the back of it which is also kind of a cool idea. But then the rest of it is, you know, pretty standard for what you would expect from a Ninjago Dragon. I do think that this set would be a little bit better if the wings were white and they faded into the tan instead of being this darker brown which fades into the tan, but you know, that's something that doesn't really matter that much and is mostly nitpicky. The minifigures here are also pretty good, it's the cheapest way that you can get the new version of Lord Roz, which is pretty cool, especially because I think he's probably going to be the main villain of this upcoming season, and then you get the new version of Lloyd and Nia. But for some reason, Sora is exactly the same design as she was before, which even though, you know, that Sora minifigure is really cool, it's just super weird that they didn't update it like they always do. It's the same thing for Eren as well. All of, you know, like the original Ninja have new designs, but then Eren and Sora are just exact same as we saw in the older Dragon Rising sets, which I think is very strange. Overall though, this is a pretty good set, but for $65, I don't think the value is particularly great, especially compared to some of the other sets in this wave, because there is one thing that this wave does well, and that is value. Speaking of that, Kai's Elemental Fire Mech is what I think is the best overall value set of this wave because even though it is only $30, you get two mechs in it and both these mechs are pretty good. The Wolf one, it's obviously smaller than the Kai one, but I actually do really like the overall slender design of it and these giant claws that it has. I also think that the Wolf villains in general are pretty cool, I like all of them. The Kai mech is also pretty solid. There's nothing about it that really sticks out as being great, but there's also nothing bad about it either. Like the other mechs, it has no knees, which I personally don't mind at this scale. It also has no elbows, which normally I would not like, but since these mechs all have waist articulation, you're going to pretty much get all the functionality by being able to move that waist around anyways, so it's not that big of a loss. The mech in general is pretty much just exactly what you need it to be. And then the set also does have two exclusives in Jordana and Zane. So overall, pretty good value for this set. Soar's tech mech is pretty similar to the Kai mech, but it is a little bit smaller at $20 and the design is a lot sleeker. Honestly though, I think what really elevates this one compared to that Kai one is the colors. This just has a much more interesting look to it because of the gold, pink, and blue scattered throughout the whole thing. Whilst Kai's mech, even though it is bigger and more detailed, it's pretty much just red, which makes it feel a little bit boring. Sora's mech also does have some good details mixed in, like the spots for her swords on the forearms, these new gold armor pieces around the waist, and then the blades on the back of the arms. This is also the only mech that has two weapons, being this double sword claw thing, and then also this saw, which I think looks really cool because of the trans pink piece. Also, there's this random tree that just comes with this set, which I didn't even realize was here at first, but it's here. It's got a spot for a minifigure, which is pretty cool. So, you know, that's a thing. So, even though this is probably one of the more simpler designs overall out of all of the mechs, it is still one of my favorites just because it looks really cool and it does everything it needs to do very, very well. And for my favorite set of this winter wave, we have Cole's Elemental Earth Mech. This to me is the most unique design out of all of them and it is obviously my favorite one. 
It's got a super bulky design that low-key reminds me of the Hulkbuster, but I also think it looks really cool. I especially love how they did the arms on this mech, which is basically double the size of the arms on the other sets, but they do kind of remind me of Cole's RX design because of the trans orange forearms which blend into the black on the top half of the arms, which I think just, you know, looks really cool. There's also this giant hammer build which fits in really well with the mech and Cole as a character. And then the legs have the pre-bent design which makes it a little bit shorter than the other sets. And normally I'm not a huge fan of the pre-bent knees because I don't think it looks very good. But because of the shaping of this new armor piece that they used on the knees here as armor, I actually don't really mind it that much. I also really like the feet build on this set which is once again much different from the other ones but I think they look really good. Minifigure wise, the coal is exclusive to this set and you do get one wolf villain which is obviously good to see. So at $20 you get a really cool mech with at least in my opinion the most interesting design of the wave and you also get an exclusive minifigure which is an overall pretty good value.